Good morning. Welcome to the Howard Performing Arts Center for this special forum today. Um, we're, we're really excited today in the Department of Music to have a uh, special guest uh, master class. Um, you may not know what a master class is, but a master class is basically when our, perform our students perform and um, then they are critiqued in various ways by somebody who specializes in that field. And so um, we have a special guest uh, star from the Broadway stage, from uh, the theater in Chicago where she's singing Angelica Schuyler in Hamilton. And yeah. I know, right? So, um, so this connection was made because, see, she has beautiful children who take violin lessons from Carla Trinchuk, who is our violin teacher. And so we made this connection, and she, Nikki Renee Daniels, has been gracious enough to come here today to work with our students and also to share a little bit uh, about her life as a performer with you all. Um, so let me just tell you a little bit more about her. In addition to Hamilton, she has sung on Broadway in the Book of Mormon, in um, Les Miserables, Anything Goes, Promises, Promises, Aida, Nine, Little Shop of Horrors, and so on. She's also sung the opera Porgy and Bess, uh, with the New York City Opera before uh, they reorganized and um, some other tours of that. And she's been in film, so she's, she is also a film actress being on The Chappelle Show, uh, Madam Secretary, the live broadcast of Sound of Music, and other, other things. So um, she has a very diverse background as a performer. And, um, and uh, I also tell you she has a, a CD out, it's called Home and you can find it on different streaming services and CD Baby and all those things. So please welcome Nikki Renee Daniels. <laughs> um, we, we would like to take a, a moment to do some Q&A. And um, we do have a microphone down front. So if you have a question that you have, uh, you'd like to ask uh, for Nikki, then um, you, can, you can do that there. I've got a, a couple of questions to get us uh, started. And uh, let me get, get to my notes there. So yeah, OK, so I guess, first of all, where does it begin? How, how did you, when did you, um, I guess, have that realization that you were called to be a performer? Um, well, I had always. Um been musical. I started when I was five playing piano lessons and then I started playing the flute. But I always loved to sing. I was just too shy <laughs> to sing in front of people. And um, I auditioned for the school musical when I was 13 and got up the courage to do it. And I had one tiny solo line and I would always get yelled at for not singing loud enough. <laughs> so, <laughs> of all things. So um, I decided to take a voice class. And that summer I it just clicked. And I loved singing and practicing singing more than I ever did the piano and the flute. And I just knew pretty much from maybe high school that it was something that I wanted to pursue. And so I had a little catching up to do because most people start you know, this musical theater thing when they're a lot younger. And um, I knew that I needed to get better at dancing and I needed to learn how to belt because I was more of a classical singer. And so in high school, I sort of focused on getting better at those types of things. And then I went to a musical theater program at University of Cincinnati, CCM. Uh, graduated from there with a BFA in musical theater and went right to New York and been lucky to do well ever since. So you actually knew that this is what you were going to do in high school? Yeah. That's pretty cool. OK. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't get that glimpse for myself uh, until my junior year in college, when I was like, ah. oh, maybe, maybe I should do this for a career. Yeah. And that was still stupid. I mean, that's just crazy. <laughs> so, but it worked out. Yeah. God has blessed you with all these opportunities. And, um, and so um, uh, now in, in Broadway, you, um, you're performing up to eight times in a week. Yeah, eight shows a week. That's every eight. Broadway show. Are, are you always performing? Or you're, yeah. you're, so you're, you're literally eight times a week, right? Yeah. And yeah. it's the same show. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> okay, so they do um, something different. They paid to see Hamilton. They don't want to see West Side Story. <laughs> well, I know, I know. Yeah, but 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 as a as an actress, um, how do you keep that fresh? What what do you what are some uh, I guess trade tricks that you yeah. use to make make it fresh uh, so it's always real? 
And well, I find that um, as an actor, listening is your best thing. You know, I've been in Hamilton since April, and I feel like, so I'm, I've done it hundreds of times, I guess, at this point, and I feel like I'm still picking up. There's so many words in Hamilton, especially, yeah. that um, it's easy to miss all the detail, you know? Yeah. So I did the Book of Mormon for almost four years, and that was a real... Uh, learning experience because I think being a good performer is its skill in its own right, but I think being able to give a good performance eight shows a week is another skill yeah. <laughs> that um, is not for everyone. You know, some people can't handle long runs, but for me, um, on Broadway, you know, you're constantly having understudies and um, standbys go on, so the, the company is never really the same every eight shows. Like, mm -hmm. since I've been in Hamilton, uh, in April, we've had the full company there, I think maybe three shows the whole time. So we have, um, I think, six swings who are people that cover the dancers in the ensemble. We have something like four standbys who only understudy principal roles. So you always are getting a different performance, you know, thrown at you if you're paying attention. Sure. <laughs> so I have, you know, two different um, ladies that understudy my sisters. So, you know, the relationship when I'm with one of them is different than it is with another. So that's one way to keep things fresh, is to pay attention to what's going on around you. So how big is the, this is this on the list, but, um, you know, who's seen Hamilton here? How many of you have seen Hamilton? Okay, so, so, so you still have time to go to Chicago and uh, check it out before it, before it closes. When is it closing? January 5th. Yeah, January 5th. But um, it, it's a great show, and it's a cast... Um, it's a cast-heavy show. It's not like just a few characters. It's really uh -huh. an all-cast, all-the-time um, theater show. It's not dependent on the set being uh -huh. awesome. I mean, the set's okay. What's yeah. awesome about it is the acting and yeah. the relationships on the stage. Uh -huh. um, but what about behind the stage? How many people are there working behind the scenes? The crew? Um, yeah. I mean, at least probably 50 people when you consider we have dressers that help us change backstage. There's at least 10 dressers. You have spot ops, the people that are way up in the back like doing the spotlights. I think that we have at least three of them. We have sound technicians, um, the sound guy that's mixing the show uh, at the back of the theater, and also sound technicians that are on stage for if something goes wrong, someone's mic goes out, they're there to switch out the mic. Uh, we have the props. We have two props, three props uh, folks backstage handing off props and yeah. yeah that's a lot. Not, not to include the ushers and the resident director and the stage manager. We have three stage managers. And yeah, I was always amazed at <laughs> how people only see what's on the stage, but they don't, they don't recognize how big of an infrastructure goes into theater mm -hmm. and uh, operas the same way. We have so many people uh, working in, in the backdrop there or even under the or in, in the pit with the orchestra and stuff like that. Right. So uh, I, uh, I looked up your CD. Uh, it's called Home, uh -huh. and I listened to it, and it's beautiful. Thank um, you. So go check out our CD. Um, in uh, several of the song selections, uh, you, you definitely are intersecting with faith and God, and uh -huh. uh, so I'm just assuming that means you're a person of faith. Uh -huh. um, how have you found faith to uh, impact or intersect with your life as an artist? Um, mm -hmm. How is it important, et cetera? Well, you know, this, this field, it, it's so um, subjective, right? You can be the best singer in the world and you might not get a part because you don't look the part or you don't, you're not tall enough or things that are out of your control. It's very much out of your control, all of, all of the things that I audition for and all of that. So I sort of just have to trust <laughs> uh, and have faith in the fact that I'm given, being given the opportunities that I'm supposed to be given and um, that, you know, I think when I am given the opportunity to perform, I always have a little prayer right before I go on stage that uh, someone in the audience would be moved or, you know, if someone is having a hard day that this performance, us together, not just me, um, would come together with all of our gifts and that we would bless that person to have a, come out of the theater feeling better or having been able to put their troubles away for that couple of hours or maybe there's a song that we sing that will resonate with, the, with someone who needs it, you know? So I always sort of pray that um, the performance would, that the gifts that I've been given would resonate with someone who needs it in the audience. That's beautiful. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it, it, it's, um, it, it's, it's, an, uh, it's an amazing thing when art touches people even in ways you don't anticipate. 
and uh, and that's how that's how art works. Yeah, and it sort of takes the pressure off of it being all about you, because <laughs> it can be very easy in this field to become very self-involved, and of course you have to be to some extent to take care of yourself to be able to perform, but. I tend to try to look at the bigger picture and go, I've been given these gifts to share them, not to you know, keep them to myself and make it all about me. So. Yeah, a, fr a friend of mine, he, uh, he and his uh, co-singer in, in an opera, they were doing a radio interview, and at one of the commercial breaks, the, um, the interviewer uh, tur turned off his mic and said, you know, I, I can't get over it. You, you're, you're both just so normal. You're like, <laughs> you're like real people. And, uh, and my friend, his name's uh, Phil, he said, he said well, you know, I've come to realize there are uh, two types of performers in the world. There are those with children and those without. <laughs> That's true. He had yes. children. Yes. Therefore, he was normal and grounded, and life was about <laughs> things other than himself. Um, anyway, you're, you're a mother. Yeah. And uh, you're, you're married. Yes. Yeah? And um, how many children do you have? Two. Two girls. Okay, so how, how do you all make this work with travels? Your husband's also a, a yeah. singer? Or? Yeah. Well, my husband and I met doing Les Mis on Broadway. And um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, funny story. Uh, John Caird, who was the original um, director of Les Mis and the original production also did our production and he was like, Les Mis always brings people together. I predict <laughs> out of this cast there will be a marriage and a child and you know, we're all like, okay, whatever. <laughs> and sure enough, we were the ones. <laughs> um, but yeah, my husband's um, in a Broadway show right now and my older daughter is six and a half, so she's in school. So this is my first time being away from them. Um, which has been really tough, but I go back to New York every Sunday night and come back to Chicago every Tuesday. And they spent the summer here, um, and my husband's in his show in New York, and we're somehow making it all work. It's uh, the artist's life, you know? We said, if anything, we've been lucky that it took this long for us to have to do this sort of juggling, but we have nannies and all of that thing, and we make it work. So, so they're still pretty young. Now, yeah. I, I've got three kids, and uh, when we lived in Germany, uh, we literally were across from the theater, and my kids felt like that was their other house. <laughs> like, they owned the theater as much as, as yeah. anybody else. And um, I, I always felt like my kids um, benefited from the experiences of, of being in the arts and around arts uh, environment. And um, so... So I don't know, have you, have you noticed anything like that yet? Or do you keep them yeah. isolated or no, do you see no, benefits? They, or? They come, I mean, you know, the Broadway community, um, I think more and more people are, are having families. I think it used to be a thing, especially for actresses, that it was kind of understood once you have kids, you're kind of retired and you're not in the business anymore. But um, lately, we have a real community of parents on Broadway and like, <laughs> When it's Halloween, uh, the theater will host a trick or treat, and all the dressing rooms will decorate and give out candy, and all the kids will come, you know. And they're used to being, like you said, backstage and on stage. And, you know, whenever we go to see a show, they're like, are we going to meet the actors? You know, they right. just feel entitled to be able to walk on stage after a show, you know, because that's what they're used to doing. Well, they're going to turn out extra great because of being around this environment. I don't, I don't know how it works, yeah. but it does. I, I, I see it in my kids, and um, uh, it's, it, it's a blessing to see that broadness in them. Yeah. You know? um, all right, so uh, you've done movies and TV? Yeah, I've done less film than theater, but yes, I have done some. Okay, so, <laughs> so how are they different? And oh, extremely different. I mean, you have, you have do-overs. Right? <laughs> when, when you do a concert or you don't have any do-overs, you do it, and if you mess up, you keep going, and you know? So uh, for film, it's like all sort of meticulously um, worked out, and you know, if you accidentally drop something, they stop and you start over or whatever, you know? It's, it's very, and I always um, say it's more of a director's medium. You know, they, they get the performance that they want out of you, and they edit it together so that it looks the way that they want it to look. Whereas in the theater or on stage, you're in once, you know, the director obviously sets the show and does all of that, but you're kind of in charge of the performance once it happens. <laughs> so, so what's your favorite uh, oops theater story where you had to keep going? Oh, let's see. Hmm. Uh, I was doing a show where I actually had to dance a bit in the show, and uh, we had to dance around a desk, and I fell. <laughs> I, my heel got caught in my hem of my dress and I was dancing and then fell right just in the middle of the Broadway stage and I jumped up so fast. <laughs> 
<laughs> Some people didn't even realize I fell. Like, it was like, just said it. Immediately, the adrenaline kicked in, and I jumped right back up. But yeah, I mean, things happen all the time. All the time. Last night, I, I forgot one of the words and satisfied my big song. I like, just as, as the more word was coming, I just flubbed it, completely forgot, and just said something else and kept going. And no one noticed except for Miguel, who plays Hamilton. <laughs> and he, he got me for it later. And, and maybe the, uh, the 8 million people who uh, have listened to the, the yeah, CD over maybe, and over. Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> But I was amazed that the people in the cast didn't notice. I was like, oh, I definitely made up like, a few words right there. Because, okay. you know, it's live, so it happens. So I'm noticing that no one's come with uh, questions yet. It's actually surprising me. But I, I've got some more here. Okay, um, do you have any uh, just general advice for our campus of students, young, young, young professionals to be? Uh, yeah. Well, something I always tell students, I think it's important to get in your head in the beginning is... I like to say, run your own race. You know, it's easy to get into comparing yourself to other people and seeing, you know, um, colleagues succeed and, and feeling like you need to keep up with them or, you know. And I just say, you know, it's run your own race. Everything that's supposed to come to you will. And when friends of yours and colleagues of yours succeed, be happy for them, as you would want them to be happy for you uh, when you succeed. And um, just try to keep some perspective. You know, it's, it's easy to get all encompassed in this, you know, performing. And, and it's, it's truly, a, it's a rough business because it's so much, as I said before, is out of your control. So I think if you just concentrate on doing your best for you. Your, your biggest competitor is yourself. So you want to feel like you've done your best. And as long as, I always feel when I've left an audition, if I've done my best and represented my talent the way I feel like I should have, then that's the win. Because, you know, that's all you have control over. So try not to obsess over the things you don't have control over. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great advice. Um, and, and then what about uh, for uh, more our music students? Oh, we have a question here. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll forget the music students. We can talk about them later. Uh, I guess I'll just kind of pull this out. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> my question for you is, um, like, how did, like, studying, like, the intricacies of your voice, like, how did learning to use this tool, this gift, this instrument, how did that help you, and how has it helped you learn to find like your voice and who you are? Like how did you discover who you are through it, I guess? Yeah, I mean, well, in the musical theater, you have to be a pretty, um, you cover a wide variety of music, you know? So I've enjoyed um, trying to make my voice as versatile as possible, you know? Um, Hamilton is really cool, as I was telling Carla in the car, I never thought I'd get to rap on stage. Um, so that's really neat. Um, Lynn and I are around the same age, and so we clearly grew up listening to all the same music, and so all of this Hamilton music came really naturally to me, and I feel like people that come to see the show are surprised that I'm so good at rapping. <laughs> I can spit bars with the best of them. Um, but <laughs> You know, that's been, but I think the versatility in the musical theater has been really great for me because, as I said, I started out classically trained and I love singing classical and legit musical theater. But I also love belting and gospel and rap. And, you know, so I think the cool thing about what I do is that um, I'm able to kind of switch gears and, and sing in one style over here and then go do Porgy and Vest over here. And then, you know, and so. I, I always encourage people to um, be as versatile as possible, if you want to be on Broadway at least, to be as versatile as possible in the music you listen to and that you perform, because I feel like it's given me the, great, the greatest joy. Because I was trying to decide between being a voice major and a musical theater major, and while I feel like maybe I would have succeeded more as an opera singer, I didn't love it like I love the musical theater. And so it's been a really great career for me. That's I hope awesome. that answered your question. <laughs> Hi, thank you so much for being here, first of all. It's a real honor to have you come, and I'm a member of the Voice Studio, so we're all in the Voice Studio. Very excited that you're here. <laughs> um, my question is two-part. What is your, um, I think besides Satisfied, which is, you know, Angelica's big song, what is your favorite song to perform as Angelica? And then what is your favorite part of the show that you like to watch from the stage or on the monitors? 
Um, I love watching the dancers in Yorktown, the Yorktown section. I mean, they are incredible. <laughs> it's just incredible. I don't know how they do it eight shows a week. I mean, the choreography in general in the show is just so amazingly done. And I think when you first watch it, you're like, wow, amazing dancing. But then Andy Blankenbuehler, the choreographer, came in and worked with us. And just to hear the intention in his mind behind all the movement is just even more next level. And like everything you watch, you're like, he's a genius. I feel like he doesn't get as much credit as he should for the putting together the show, because he's a huge part of, of it. Um, my favorite thing to sing, other than Satisfied, is probably the Reynolds pamphlet. <laughs> Just because it's like, uh, I love that song. It's like hilarious, and you can't believe that it's true, you know? <laughs> it's better than fiction. Um, <laughs> But just getting to come in there with like laser-like focus and like tell him off for like 16 bars and then walk away. I just love it. It's, it's awesome. It's, it's really cool.